Let's follow the macaw to his home, his habitat. Welcome to the tropical rainforest habitat. A habitat is a place where plants and animals naturally live. It provides what they need to survive, like food, water, and shelter. The rainforest habitat is warm, wet, and full of many different plants and animals. Tropical rainforests cover only a small portion of the Earth's surface, but they provide the rest of the world with clean air, medicines, and plants and animals that cannot survive on their own anywhere else. The rainforest habitats are mostly found in the tropical zone, close to the equator. The tropical zone circles the Earth at the equator like a wide belt. It lies between here and here. These lines are called the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Here the sun shines directly overhead about 12 hours every day. The temperature in the rainforest can vary between a hot 95 degrees Fahrenheit and a cool 64 degrees Fahrenheit. But most of the time it is a warm and moist 80 degrees. If you want to feel how warm and damp rainforest air is, try walking through a greenhouse. Greenhouses are special buildings that are kept warm and moist so that plants can grow all year long. Rainforests are also the wettest habitat of all the land habitats. Rain showers drench most rainforests more than 200 days out of the year. To get an idea of how much water these showers can produce, let's compare the height of a fourth grader to the amount of rain that falls in the rainforest in one year. 200 centimeters of rain fall every year in most rainforests, and some rainforests receive 632 centimeters of rain every year. That's as high as this two-story building. Compare that to a desert with 10 centimeters or less rainfall per year. Wow, what a difference. Now let's look at the average rainfall in a different kind of forest, a temperate forest. A temperate forest has seasons with warm summers and cold winters. Usually, 75 to 200 centimeters of rain falls every year in a temperate forest. That's a lot of rain, but not as much as in the tropical rainforest. Tropical rainforests are much warmer and wetter than a temperate forest. Wet, warm, and sunny days make the tropical rainforest a good home for many living things. About half of all the plants on Earth live in the rainforest. There are so many plants in the rainforest that scientists haven't yet been able to identify them all. In the temperate forest, most of the trees are from the same species. The species of most of the trees in this forest is pine. But in the tropical rainforest, over 250 different types of trees can grow in just one area. That means you could walk for quite a while without seeing the same kind of tree twice. Just as there is a large variety of plant life, there is also a large variety of animal life in the tropical rainforest. More types of animals live here than anywhere else on land. Different kinds of reptiles, amphibians, mammals, insects, fish, and birds call the rainforest home. There are only about 50 different types of birds in a temperate forest, but there can be 230 different types of birds in a tropical rainforest. That's a lot of birds, but would you believe there are even more kinds of insects? In fact, there are over 42,000 different types of insects in the tropical rainforest. There are more insects in the tropical rainforest than any other animal. In one tree in a rainforest in Peru, Scientists found 43 different kinds of ants. That's more different kinds of ants than are found in the entire United States. It's hard to believe that so many plants and animals can live together in such a small area, but they do. Some of these plants and animals in the tropical rainforest are able to live together by forming symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship means that two different things live together and help each other in some way. Here's the symbiotic relationship between a butterfly and a flower. In the rainforest, butterflies, bees, birds, and bats get their nutrients by drinking nectar from the flowers. As they move from one flower to another, they carry pollen grains that will help the plant produce seeds. Trees and plants help some animals by providing shelter for them. 
These animals help the trees and plants by spreading their seeds. As the animal moves around, seeds from the tree or plant may stick to its fur. When the animal travels away from that area, the seeds can fall off, allowing new plants to grow in a new area. Another example of a symbiotic relationship is that of leaf-cutting ants and fungus. Leaf-cutting ants chew pieces of leaves off trees and feed them to fungus. When the fungus grows, the ants eat it. The ants and the fungus have a symbiotic relationship. Some ants make their nests in some flowers. This flower provides shelter for the ants, and the ant nest provides nutrients for the flower. Like other forests, the tropical rainforest is divided into imaginary layers called the canopy, the understory, and the forest floor. Plants and animals make their homes in all the layers of the rainforest, from the tops of the trees all the way to the ground. The tops of the tallest trees form a huge leafy layer called the canopy. Think of this as a roof of leaves and tree branches. These trees grow very tall and their leaves stay green all year long. The green chlorophyll in millions of leaves trap the sunlight and combine it with carbon dioxide from the air and water to make sugars, the plant's food. This process is called photosynthesis. The sugars are stored in the plant's leaves, stems, roots, flowers, and fruit. In this way, food for the whole rainforest is produced in the canopy. Many animals spend most of their lives in the branches of the canopy. This fruit bat lives on a small rainforest island in the bare upper branches of the canopy trees. He usually sleeps in the day and feeds at night, but he is catching a rare daylight snack of fruit. The crowned pigeon finds food in all layers of the tropical rainforest, but lays its eggs in nests at the top of the trees. Just below the canopy is the understory. Plants that don't grow as tall as trees make up the understory, like vines, flowers, and ferns. The large leaves from the canopy keep most of the sunlight from reaching the understory. Plants and animals here have learned to adapt to the dim light and damp air. The black and white ruffed lemur likes to move between the canopy and the understory looking for food. The emperor tamarind likes to move around the understory of the Amazonian rainforest. She likes to eat fruit and small insects. This playful white-handed gibbon spends her days in the canopy and the understory looking for fruit and leaves to eat. White-handed gibbons call out to each other to protect their territory and to bond with their mates. The lowest layer of the rainforest is called the forest floor. Can you guess why? Few plants live on the forest floor because very little sunlight reaches past the canopy and the understory. Many animals make the forest floor their home. The hungry mouse deer comes out in the evening for a meal of leaves from the rainforest floor. This small coppery skink hunts insects on the ground and under rocks. His scales are an adaptation that protect him like a suit of armor. Plants in the tropical rainforest also have special adaptations in order to survive. In many areas, heavy rains have washed the minerals and nutrients out of the rainforest soil. This means there are very few nutrients deep in the soil where plant roots usually grow. Rainforest plants get some of their nutrients from the top layer of soil, with roots that are shallow and stretch wide. The roots are often covered with thick mats of hair, which help hold in or retain rainwater. Some rainforest plants can also get nutrients from the rainwater that sits on their leaves. Another source of nutrients for plants in the tropical rainforest is decomposers. Decomposers like ants, worms, bacteria, and fungi pick apart dead material like leaves, plants, fruit peels, and dead animals. When the decomposers break apart this dead material, they release nutrients that help new plants grow. It only takes six weeks to break down a leaf in the rainforest. In a temperate forest, it can take up to a year to break down a leaf. Decomposers are hard at work on the rainforest floor. They are very important. Without some of them, rainforest plants would die from lack of nutrients. You know that the rainforest provides a home for all kinds of plants and animals. But did you know that it helps people too? 
Scientists have studied only a few of the rainforest plants, but already these plants are used to make one-fourth of our medicines. The bark of the cinchona tree provides us with quinine to treat a disease called malaria. Doctors use the bark of the tree, curare lianus, to keep people from feeling pain during surgery. It's an anesthetic. A chemical from the calabar bean is used to treat an eye disease called glaucoma. Scientists believe that even the cure to cancer may be found in the rainforest. We can also thank rainforests for our clean air and for keeping our temperature comfortable. Rainforest plants produce a lot of oxygen when they use the sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce sugar. This process provides oxygen that animals and people need to breathe and helps keep our air clean. By taking in carbon dioxide, rainforests keep harmful gases from building up. They also absorb a lot of heat from the sun that keeps the rest of the world from getting too warm. When gases build up and the air gets too warm, the earth heats up. This is sometimes called the greenhouse effect. With all the wonderful things that the rainforest offers us, you might think that people are very careful about how it is being used. That used to be true. For thousands of years, people have lived in the rainforest. People who lived in the tropical rainforest learned to use the water, plants, and animals without harming the rainforest. But many of the tropical rainforests are being destroyed. Some of the countries that have rainforests are very poor. These countries often cut down the trees and sell the timber to earn money. After the trees are cut, the cleared land is used to grow crops. Clearing the land of many trees or forests is called deforestation. If a small patch of trees is cut, the trees can slowly grow back. But if large patches of forest are cut down, there are not enough roots to hold down the soil. The soil washes or blows away and the ground gets too hard to grow more trees. Currently, 75 acres of rainforest are destroyed every minute. That means an area of trees about the size of a football field disappears every second. More than one-third of Latin America's rainforests have been cut down. Asia has cut down almost half of its rainforests, and Africa has cut down more than half of its rainforests. We have already lost half of the Earth's natural rainforests. When rainforests are cut down, they are no longer able to provide medicines, keep our air healthy, or keep our earth at a comfortable temperature. If the rainforests disappear, thousands of unique species of plants and animals will also disappear. Without a place to live or food to eat, animals become extinct. An animal is considered extinct when every member of its species has died. Once a species is gone, it, it is, is gone, gone forever. forever. In the rainforest, 50 to 100 species become extinct every day. It is important that we do everything we can to save or conserve this habitat that provides us with so much. People are helping to prevent deforestation. Some are working to restore parts of the rainforest that have been cut down. Conservation groups work with the government to make protected areas like national parks in the tropical rainforest. Here plants and animals are kept safe. Governments and conservation groups also work with companies to help them use the rainforest more wisely. These companies are still able to use the rainforest without destroying it. Maybe you've even heard of organizations that are dedicated to raising money to buy land in rainforests for conservation. These groups also let the public know about the importance of the rainforest and things we can do to help save it. Now that you have learned about the tropical rainforest, the great variety of plants and animals within it, and the ways in which it helps us, remember that it is our job to protect this unique habitat, the tropical rainforest habitat. For the complete habitat series, call 100% Educational Videos, one 800 483-3383